Uh, well, viewers, uh, today we are focusing on very simple to myometic drugs, and uh, these are your objectives. So, uh, this lecture covered both lecture one and lecture two. Keep in mind, dear students, these are your objectives, especially uh, for the module that is man and his environment, and regarding the objectives that you should be able to know about the energy transmission and correlate with site of action of drugs so you have to recall your teachers especially physiology teachers uh, lecture and of course anatomy teacher lecture then we can proceed so let me proceed i have discussed this uh, particular uh, slide with you yesterday in the classroom and you know uh, the peripheral nervous system consists of this parasympathetic division and then the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system so we have discussed that in the class and you have the sketch uh, on the left side you can see uh, there is um, i have tabulated all these activities organ wise effect as i told you in the class so we will be discussing and correlating this with the parasympathetic or parasympathomimetic drugs and though sympathetic stimulation will be taught to you by your other tutors so the message for you people is that uh, this is a part of the cholinergic transmission so i will skip this and i will elaborate it my own you know here on the left side if you see uh, there is organ wise and the heart and heart has is supplied by both the sympathetic as well as the parasympathetics so you can see it i have drawn it for you that in case of sympathetic nervous system in case of sympathetic nervous system the neurotransmitter at the adrenergic nerve ending is norepinephrine as i discussed in the class and in case of cholinergic nervous system or the parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine and heart is an organ which is being supplied by beta 1 as well as muscarinic type 2 receptors. So it means heart is both innervated by the adrenergic nervous system, mean the sympathetic nervous system, as well as the parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. When norepinephrine comes and attach with these receptors, you see what will happen. It is going to mimic the activity and you know that there is ATP, adenylyl, adenylyl triphosphate adenosine triphosphate rather and there is an enzyme adenylyl cyclase adenylyl cyclase cyclase means that this atp is a parallel longitudinal molecule and then it is converted into a cyclic form that is why the name of this enzyme is cyclase cyclase it converts this longitudinal atp molecule into cyclic amp molecule your biochemistry teacher will tell you about this. Coming back to the point, you know, this is the myocardium, myocardium of the ventricles. And when uh, norepinephrine comes and attached with beta 1 receptor present at the level of the heart, so it is going to mimic or stimulate the ATP uh, adenylyl cyclase, converting the ATP into cyclic AMP. And the cyclic AMP is going to trigger the calcium from the extracellular and bringing it intracellularly and the calcium level is raised once the calcium level is raised what it does it is going to produce a contraction of the myocardium and contraction of the myocardium will perform what it will eject the blood into the aorta so it will eject the blood into the aorta and what will happen it is going to increase the stroke volume stroke volume so dear student in case of sympathetic nervous system stimulation the norepinephrine come and attach with beta 1 receptors and is going to stimulate the cyclic amp and this cyclic amp is going to trigger the entry of calcium from the extracellular to the intracellular as well as the release of calcium from the internal store and this will lead to increasing the contraction of the myocardium god is the biggest scientist at the same time heart is being innervated by the M2 type receptor of the parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. Here on the left side you can see it. On the left side you can see it that there is in case of heart M2 receptors are there. 
and this M2 receptor has been stimulated so what will happen it's going to have a negative effect on the adrenal cyclase so the cyclic AMP level will be decreased and this is what this will now decrease the heart rate and it will decrease the force of contraction of myocardium so this will lead to a fall in cardiac output and this fall in cardiac output will also lead to a decrease uh, in blood pressure as well so let me proceed how it happens and let me cover the organ wise effect you know this is uh, what happening at the level of adrenergic nervous system this is what we discuss in case of adrenergic nervous system and in case of cholinergic nervous system for example here the the acetylcholine is released in case of cholinergic nervous system and in case of adrenergic nervous system the norepinephrine is attached and norepinephrine will come will attach and it's like the KMP we discussed now in case of parasympathomimetics or cholinergic so we are focusing on the cholinergic drugs in this lecture or cholinomimetic drugs so when this acetylcholine is released into this synapse you know this is the gap between the adrenal, uh, the, the cholinergic nerve ending and the M2 receptor, muscarinic type 2 receptor of the parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. Remember, the heart is simultaneously innervated by the beta 1 adrenergic nervous system. And for this, this is the synapse. So we will consider, we will consider now this side, right side. So what happened when the acetylcholine is released and come and attach with this receptors, muscarinic type 2 receptor, as I discussed in the previous lecture. Uh, so what will happen what will happen you can see on the left side the heart SA node is innervated with uh, M2 type receptors and the contractility is also mean the myocardium is also innervated with the with the M2 receptors so what will happen here we have M2 receptors at the level of heart but dear students when this acetylcholine come and attach with this muscarinic receptor it will have a negative effect on the adrenal cyclase will decrease this cyclic AMP and decreasing the calcium will lead to decreasing the force of contraction of the myocardium as I discussed in the previous slide. Now a very important point to remember is if we ignore this adrenergic nerve system on the right side, left side so if we inhibit this enzyme remember acetylcholine has to be regulated god is the biggest scientist acetylcholine is converted inactivated by the esterase enzyme into choline and acetyl group and this choline is again reuptaken into the cholinergic nerve ending and this choline is now attached with the acetyl CoA coming from the citric acid cycle carboxylic acid cycle and then it again form acetylcholine which is stored in the vesicle and when uh, an electric impulse comes you see so it leads to the release of this fusion release of acetylcholine into the synapse and then it goes and attach with the, this particular M2 receptors so and it is going to stimulate again uh, this particular receptor and agonist of M2 receptor will lead to an inhibitory effect or decrease in the effect on the cyclic AMP and will decrease in the force of contraction of the myocardium and this is what we want and here you can see that the contractility is decrease is decrease in case of in case of in case of heart myocardium now there is a this acetylcholine has to be regulated so esterase enzyme is going to is going to esterase enzyme is going to convert this acetylcholine into an form. if you block this esterase enzyme esterase inhibitors what will happen the acetylcholine level will be increased and this acetylcholine level then will come and attach with these M2 receptors so there will be severe bradycardia you know one is these drugs coming directly attaching with these receptor directly coming attaching with these M2 receptor they are called direct acting and those drugs which inhibit these stress enzyme they are called indirect acting so in the classification you will now find directly acting and indirect acting but before we proceed the muscarinic type receptors are m2 m4 m1 m3 and m5 they are m1 m2 m3 m4 and m5 but on which side of action it does works so remember this is this is this is even number this is even number one three and five 
uh, and regarding this uh, not even this is odd number sorry this is odd number odd number odd I will I will I'll correct you this is odd number odd number and this is even number v1 number divided by 2 this is m2 receptor and m4 receptor remember this is coupled with g quantal protein that is inhibit g uh, inhibitory protein ligand gi and this is going to decrease the adn alliance cycle as, as we discussed in the previous slide we discussed it is going to have a negative effect on the adn alliance cycle as cyclic mp level is decreased this is what we discussed here also so coming back to the point so a drug that is going to stimulate this M2 receptor present at the level of heart, which is also present, no, in, there is another type that is M4 receptors coupled with the G0. So it is going to hyperpolarize. Hyperpolarize means then a strong stimulus is required to, to stimulate this particular myocardium. That is why it produces cardiac inhibition. On the other side, M1, M3 and M5 receptor is going to to, to is coupled with quantal protein ligand G and then GQ and then it is going to produce depolarization and the response is muscular contraction. We will cover this uh, this particular uh, action here and the left side and this and that we will go to the organ wise effect. So we have summarized for you the organ wise effects and before going that uh, I'm coming back to the point. So the classification of parasympathomimetic drugs this cholinomimet one will be the directly acting that comes and attached with the receptors and they are classified as cholinester and the other as alkaloid and the other is indirectly acting that is going to inhibit it is going to inhibit the esterase enzyme as we discussed in the previous slide esterase enzyme and the acetylcholine level will be increased at the level of synapse and then it goes and attached with the receptor these are classes of hydroponium carbamates and organophosphates so now let me go Coming back to the point and let me discuss. So acetylcholine is a prototype drug and we will be discussing now the acetylcholine as a representative of this uh, parasympathomimetic class of drug and let me proceed. As I discussed with you this regarding the absorption, it is a very polar cum, so it is an anionized form and therefore it is not going to cross the blood brain barrier. However, it is very rapidly hydrolyzed and into acetyl and choline so therefore the half-life is 5 to 20 seconds and that is why it is not used therapeutically and the eye you know it is too polar so it cannot be absorbed therefore it has no effect distribution again as we discussed it is very rapidly hydrolyzed by the choline stress enzyme so they are directly though they are directly stimulate the muscarinic receptor and nicotinic receptor but regarding distribution since it is very rapidly hydrolyzed therefore it cannot cross the blood brain barrier so the effect on the cns i will now come to this left side let me go to the cns uh, what will be the effect on the cns uh, is it written here or not organ wise system adipose tissue autonomic nervous system so if i tell you on the cns it is not written here it cannot cross the blood brain barrier because the the blood vessels are not finasteriated they don't help they don't help pore so it cannot cross the blood brain barrier blood brain barrier bbb at the level of central nervous system it, therefore it has no effect so far the eye myosis due to the stimulation of m3 receptors so you can see at this side in the radial muscle fiber you see this is there is no receptor of the parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system however the circular muscle fiber mean as i discussed with you in the class this is the people with the circular muscle fiber and in the iris radial muscle fiber are in the iris so the iris do not have muscarinic receptor the iris do not have the muscarinic receptor therefore only the circular muscle circular pipelli or circular muscle fiber is supplied with the m3 receptor here is the here is the m3 receptor and it is uh, in a, uh, 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 supplied by the uh, third nerve which is oculomotor nerve third cranial nerve which is oculomotor nerve now what will happen when acetylcholine come and attach with this it is going to increase the tone and constriction of this so what will happen it is going to dilate the people so it is what will the effect on the eye the effect on the eye will be dilation of the people uh, sorry uh, constriction of the people so the people is constricted and there will be meiosis not dialysis so meiosis will be there and it is going to constrict the people 
let me go to the cardiovascular system and in the cardiovascular system you know regarding the heart the heart is supplied SA node is you know heart ha is having its own conductive system SA node and then the AV node and then the Purkinje fiber so here it tells you SA node is supplied with M2 receptors and SA node is the pacemaker so it is going to decrease the heart rate how because the discharges will be decreased so SA node is going to decrease the heart rate and then the AV node is not supplied with the M2 receptors it is supplied with the beta 1 beta 2 receptor of the sympathetic nervous system regarding the contractility as I discussed in the previous slides so it is supplied with the M2 receptors the muscles are myocardium is supplied with M2 receptors and this contractility will be decreased so stroke volume will be stroke volume will be decreased also and blood pressure will also be decreased and how it is going to affect the vasculature the vasculature mean blood vessels you know it is supplied within three receptors and this supply in, in three receptors you know is going to is going to is going is going to uh, de decrease uh, the, the 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 vascular tone and the nitric oxide is released and this nitric oxide is going to uh, perform deep phosphorylation and and and, and muscular uh, vaso vasodilation will be there and once vasodilation is there through the endothelial derived relaxing factors as well so a fall in blood pressure will be there remember in small doses the acetylcholine is going to produce a very good a more fall in blood pressure but in large doses as we discussed with you in the last yesterday lecture that the release from the adrenal medulla there is release from the adrenal medulla the 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 the, the norepinephrine and epinephrine and is going to now compensate the mo most fall in blood pressure why release of norepinephrine so there will be a very less fall in blood pressure if you if you if you give a large doses because it's from the sympathetic ganglia the norepinephrine and epinephrine will be released so this is the mechanism that we discussed how it's going to produce that in three receptor when acetylcholine come and attach with this it leads to the uh, release of nitric oxide and nitric oxide will convert the GTP into cyclic GMP cyclic guanyl monophosphate and this will produce muscular depospolarization de and relaxation of the of the this uh, so if this is the diameter then after that the diameter will be a big one and a pressure will fall in the blood vessels so on the vasculature you see the cutaneous vasculature it is only supplied by the sympathetic and there is no parasympathetic division supply is not there and let me go to the organ wise effect now i will now shift to the to make things easy for you i will shift to the left side of the left side of the what you can say my 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 my, my lecture and let me summarize it for you so these are organ wise effect uh, the radial muscle fiber as I discussed it is supplied with the uh, alpha 1 and your other tutor who is covering, to, uh, covering this topic he will teach you but parasympathetic innervation is through the circular muscle fiber in 3 receptor there will be meiosis meiosis mean there will be uh, 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 meiosis at the, less, at the level of ciliary, ciliary muscle when it is going to uh, stimulated by acetylcholine in case of heart we discussed bradycardia blood pressure will be decreased and in case of in case of what you can say uh, nodal activity is also decreased so there will be bradycardia vasculature we discussed in the previous slide now going to the GIT what will be the effect on the gastrointestinal system so regarding uh, smooth muscles uh, there will be contraction because M3 receptor is there acetylcholine will come and attach with this so contraction will be there peristalsis will be uh, increased sphincter uh, relaxation will be there because of the stimulation of the M3 receptors and at the same time mm, you can see here the secretion will be increased uh, secretogog so stimulation of the secretory gland will lead to increasing the lacrimation and Similarly, my enteric plexus activation through the muscarinic type 1 M1 receptor is also there. Regarding genitourinary tract, uh, the bladder wall is being constructed. You know, this is M3 receptors, and the sphincter will be relaxed, so it will produce urination. So it will it will promote 
urination will be promoted and regarding uterine muscle contraction it will be contracted because the stimulation of in three receptors uh, regarding penis and seminal vesicle yes erection will be there to the involvement of muscarinic receptor regarding airways respiratory system what will happen it will going to constrict the bronchial smooth muscle wall and they will lead to bronchospasm as well so this will lead to bronchospasm through the stimulation of in three receptors and bronchial mucus, mucus secretion it will be activated like remission will be there secretion will be increased through the stimulation of in three receptor regarding skin pyelomotor erection you know it is not supplied by any receptor sweat gland this is the beauty of god sweat gland and thermoregulatory is through the adrenal receptors involving the muscarinic receptor you know and here is the colino receptor and alpha receptor you see apocrine gland stress responsive and this adrenergic sweating this we call as adrenergic sweating as well but here it is not being supplied by the parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system regarding the metabolism this is very important metabolism is all is used by the sympathetic nervous system and it has nothing to play any role with metabolism by the parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system i am very interested in the in the in the autonomic nervous system nerve endings you know uh, and here is the uh, norepinephrine release inhibition from the non adrenergic nerve ending and this is through the m1 receptors so on the whole on the autonomic nervous system nerve endings there will be m1 receptors and this m1 receptor is going to affect uh, the uh, norepinephrine release is inhibited from the adrenergic nerve ending so one system is having a regulatory effect parasympathetic is counteracting on the what you can say on the sympathetic but it's not necessary that your organ will be innervated by 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 both the system so coming back to the lecture as we discuss with you uh, so now i can skip very easily as we discuss so 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 the message for you is acetylcholine and the cardiovascular system you see we discuss now acetylcholine and the respiratory yes bronchial secretion will be increased and skeletal muscle of course muscular contraction will be there and this is another drug directly like methacholine this is has a more half life than the uh, acetylcholine so that is why it is used therapeutically so it's 30 minutes the only difference that it is in the in the in the in the uh, from the acetylcholine is that it has a more half life acetylcholine has 5 to 20 seconds therefore it is not used therapeutically acetylcholine is not used therapeutically however methacholine is used therapeutically and what would be, will be its effect its effects will be in the treatment of paroxysmal supraventricular uh, tachycardia atrial tachycardia you know now that these are replaced by very good drugs and on the scene and this deltaism and calcium channel blockers are have replaced this uh, methacholine this is the bicarbacol and bitonicol uh, comparisons this is usually asked for the for the kinetic point of view and mechanism of action yes through the involvement of in three receptors stimulate both muscarinic and the cotonic and it's going to stimulate only the muscarinic m2 m3 receptor and therefore the tone of the wall is increased motility is increased sphincter is relaxed as we discussed in the previous slide so these will be the therapeutic uses bethonicol is used in acute gastric ulcer dilation periodic ileus post-operative urinary retention and these will be the side effects uh, carbacol is used in the treatment of glaucoma uh, not used systemically as it is non uh, selective it may go to the other it may affect the other organ as well so this is a pseudomeline and this pseudomeline is a directly muscarinic agonist and it is usually used in the treatment of xerostomia usually associated with dry mouth and some dental caries and other related uh, pilocarpine is a drug that is going to decrease the intraocular pressure by the stimulation of the m3 receptors and this m3 receptor is going to help you uh, to treat uh, in helping in the decreasing the intraocular pressure in the mouth xerostoma is being treated this is what we discussed and this is another drug uh, a partial nicotinic agonist and it reduces it reduces 
the craving in the person being addicted to nicotine so it is used in the uh, treatment of person being addicted to uh, or habituated to use of nicotine uh, rest of the thing is the indirectly acting as we discussed what will be the indirectly acting that is drugs that is going to uh, inhibit the esterase enzyme this esterase enzyme is going to convert acetylcholine acetylcholine into choline group choline group plus acetyl group this is inactive this is inactive this is inactive and this is active so this choline is uptaken here and again choline plus acetyl group this acetyl group comes from the citric acid cycle as i discussed and this acetylcholine is then released into the synapse again and then the end organ is there and for example there is m2 receptor at the level of heart and it's attached and it produces uh, there its response decreasing the cyclic amp as we discussed so then bradycardia is there in case of uh, heart being innervated by m2 receptor so when you block these drugs then acetylcholine level is increased and once the acetylcholine level is increased then it comes and attached with these receptors therefore it is called as indirectly acting drug so we will be focusing indirectly drug in the next lecture i hope now you understand this uh, parasympathetic type one that we discussed part one purpose of the lecture thank you